surveillance footage, missing hours, gaps in memory, and a tangled web of accusations. This is the story of Jane Doe and Pete Hegseth, a drama straight out of a true crime thriller. Who's telling the truth and who's playing games? We're going to break it all down piece by piece. You won't want to miss it. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Please subscribe, hit the notification bell, and smack that like button because you know why. All right, let's start with this one. Jane Doe and Pete Hegseth, a scandal that has more twists and turns than Kamala Harris's explanation for the border crisis. This is a story about missing hours, allegations, and the absolute train wreck that followed. Let's get ready. Picture this. Jane Doe tells her husband she's off to a business conference at a hotel. By 5 p.m., she's out the door and texting updates like a responsible spouse. But by 12.30 a.m., her texts stop and her hubby gets a little bit nervous. Fast forward to 2 a.m., and by this time, the husband is channeling his inner Sherlock Holmes, searching the hotel, even stopping by Knuckles Bar. And where's Jane? Nowhere to be found. Then, at 4 a.m., she waltzes back into the room like nothing ever happened, claiming, oh, I must have fallen asleep. Her husband bought it because, according to him, she looked totally fine, no slurring, no stumbling, and the surveillance footage backed her up. Sober as a judge, but why was she missing for hours? Here's where it gets interesting. Around 1.15 a.m., Jane and Pete Hegseth leave Knuckles Bar, arms linked like they're in some romantic comedy. Things take a turn an hour later when hotel staff respond to noise complaints by the pool. Apparently, Hegseth was drunker than Uncle Eddie at Thanksgiving, but Jane? Cool as a cucumber guiding him inside like a camp counselor hurting rowdy kids. Witnesses at the bar paint a mixed picture. One says she was just buzzed. Another calls her a crotch blocker for stopping Pete from hitting on someone else. Now, was she a heroine or an accomplice? You decide. But then things escalate. A few days later, Jane alleged that Pete Hegseth sexually assaulted her. Details were sparse. But she began experiencing distress and she linked it to the encounter. She saw a doctor, was diagnosed with bacterial vaginosis, and connected it to the incident with Pete. When the police got involved, things got murky. Jane claimed memory loss and nightmares. Sounds like she was related to Christine Blasey Ford, right? But she also mentioned asking Hegseth for a condom. Wait, what? When police ask Jane Doe to do a pretext phone call, she declined. When police ask you to do that, a pretext phone call, it's a phone call between the victim and her alleged perpetrator. It's an easy way to gather evidence. Police record the call and the victim calls her attacker. She says to the guy, like, why did you do what you did to me? And the police listen to how he responds. Jane said no, citing emotional strain. She actually started crying on the phone with the cops. Her decision to not participate in that phone call didn't exactly scream, let's prove my case. And police started questioning her credibility. That was real convenient for her, wasn't it? Surveillance footage and eyewitness accounts don't back her claims. Jane was coherent, her timeline intact. Pete, on the other hand, was drunker than Biden trying to pronounce infrastructure. Police didn't press charges, and the case fell apart faster than a CNN news segment with Vivek Ramaswamy as a guest. And yet the media circus continued. Pete insists the encounter was consensual, and the evidence seems to support him. Meanwhile, Jane's credibility takes hit after hit after hit. Why refuse to participate in the pretext call? Was it because she knew what Hegseth would say if she started lying about the encounter on the phone? something she would have to do to convince the police that she was a victim? Why the memory loss if she was sober? Questions pile up, but the answers? Not so much. Big picture time, guys. This saga is a reminder of why due process matters. High-stakes accusations demand thorough investigations. Without evidence, the court of public opinion becomes a real dumpster fire. And let's not forget the political angle. Hegseth's confirmation is at stake, and Democrats are circling like vultures. Now, in the end, this isn't about Jane and Pete. It's about resisting the urge to jump to conclusions without the facts. Whether you're Team Jane, Team Pete, or you're just here for the drama, 
one thing's clear. This story is far from over. And I don't believe that anything that happened in this story that Hegseth should be denied a honest hearing. All right. Thank you for watching. Subscribe. Hit that notification bell. If you want to be kept up to date with more stories like this one, I'll see you in the next one. Spread the word.